All right, so the layers we have so far. We had our thumbnail sketches, figuring out how we wanted to compose it. We've already made the format at the right size and the right resolution. Very important before we paint anything. It's 350 pixels per inch um, by at least 8 by 10. I'm doing it 11 inches by 14 inches. And if you want to make it horizontal, you make it horizontal, but then your thumbnails work within those horizontals. Then I chose the sketch I wanted to kind of build on top of the thumbnail sketch. And then I refine the sketch a little bit on a new layer with a soft edge brush at a lower opacity. That way it's easier to kind of see that the right lines are in there. And now I'm starting to layer it up on top with 100% opacity with a custom made brush. And I'm just staying on the brush tool. It's ideal to just stay on that same tool the entire time you're digitally painting and just holding down option when you want to steal a color. And right now I am intentionally working at 100% on top of my sketch layer because I'm trying to kind of fill up the empty space with flat color. And even though I'm stealing the colors right from my photo reference, they'll look pretty different on my um, on my painting. You see the browns, the bluish grays. That's just to show you that in reality, there's a lot of color to this stuff that we don't always recognize. And I much prefer stealing colors from images than always having to just pick them from a slider. Right? We want that kind of complexity, but we'll get into to picking some of our own colors too. So about this point, when I've made a bit of a kind of a sketch with my big opaque paintbrush, kind of my first steps, now I want to tone the background. And some digital painters will do this from the very beginning, right? But it, if I did it from the from too early, I wouldn't be able to see my sketch too well. So I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so instead of the white background, I'm going to, on top of that, make a new layer and say Edit Fill with 50% gray. So this is called a toned background. And that way you can see that any whites that I want aren't default, aren't already coming through. I have to paint them. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock that background and go back to my painting layer. So I'm gonna call this, so my base painting layer is the first layer that's actually gonna stay, <laughs> you know, uh, in my finished work. This is the, the underpainting that I build on, on top of, and I can see it better if I have gray behind it. And that shows me where I need to keep adding tone, especially light tones. It's just one little stray hair there. And notice I'm keeping my brush pretty big throughout. I can also just steal tone from myself, just holding down option. And just with the trackpad, pretty sloppy, I'm building in the base of what will be my painting. And notice I'm not going to the eraser at all, right? I'm just painting with new paint when I want to go over something. Now, because I don't have a pressure sensitive stylus, I do sometimes have to make my, my brush smaller, right? But I'm trying to keep it as big as possible to begin with. And now I can start measuring little proportions. You see how that mouth is a little bit low Maybe the nose is a little bit high. So this is what I like. For the base painting, I can now 
use digital tools. And this works just as well on animals as it works on people. And try to get that triangle between their nose, their eyes, and their lips to have a little bit more likeness. Not that it needs to be perfect, but this is a, a big advantage of digital is usually our initial sketch isn't proportioned maybe the way it should be. Because this is just the base painting. Right? So big difference between that and this. And this is closer to the proportions I need. So as I do more refined painting, I'm going to build it on top of that. Right. So while that's saving, I want to go to the assignment sheets page. And right underneath the actual assignment sheet, you have a link to some slides that were put together with a past honor student talking about digital painting. Right. So this is different than digital coloring because this is coloring on top of a sketched line or just blocked out shapes. And those handouts, I include the slide of it here, those can be found under links. So the process, no matter how detailed it is at the end, how realistic, is just layering and layering of shaped colored brushes. And your finish is up to you. It doesn't need to look representational. It can be abstracted. It can be really experimental. It can even composite together different kind of experiments with digital paint. So here are like the main tips. The details, you want to pay attention to them, but you don't put them in until the very end. So instead, you're kind of framing around them. So the details of most portraits are the eyes. And so you might be uh, really tempted to go in and paint the eyes right away and finish them off. But that would be a big mistake because it's all about what happens around them that matters. So you're trying to get the big blocks first. And so blocking color is very important. And notice how much that will change compositions as you go. To grab color while in brush mode, because we just want to stay on the brush tool, you, you hold down the Option Alt key. And then it will immediately like pick up that color onto your brush. So here we have the demo by this past honor student, right? Taking this reference, doing some basic shapes, but eventually those basic shapes get altered and stuff before the finished painting is done. So here we can see it. And a digital painting can take a while. Now he did that just for these slides. And so he kind of timed himself and did a little GIF animation of the different steps. And it took around six hours. So just like real painting, there's no shortcut for it. It takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of you know, attention to different things. So to get skilled at it doesn't mean you get that much faster. It just means you don't make a lot of unnecessary mistakes. And you put that time towards the creation of the artwork in a productive way. Now, when he was in Digital Art 1, he did a self-portrait. And he had some fun with it. And you can. You can really play with stylizing. He played with color. He played with uh, distortions in proportions, made his nose a lot bigger made himself green, kind of cut out his hair as this wonky shape. All of that's just your own stylistic whims, right? So what I like about digital painting is it's the ultimate technique to kind of finish something off, right? But you can also use it on top of compositing. You can use it, um, along with all your other methods, it gives you just full control of every pixel. And then I use kind of a dragon theme for the rest of the examples. And there's, there's no one artist that digitally paints the same as another artist. So if you're looking at end product art by a digital painter you really admire, 
it's really helpful to see how they go about it. This one finishes off with pretty clean line art and then just replaces it all with digital painting. You see it all gets covered up and replaced. But it would probably work as digital coloring too if they just left the outline in. This one has pretty clean line art as well and then gets fully replaced and then really textured, really colored. All right. So you can refer back to those slides, but it's not as prescriptive as digital coloring. And then the other, the other set of slides you have is from a past student example for a final presentation that's all about digital painting, but done in kind of a neat way. And this was another kind of young artist that kind of limits themselves to pretty quick digital paintings. They're all kind of one day projects, but then finds, finds ways to make them kind of quirky. And especially for this project, it's pretty inspiring. What I really like is it's a really satisfying level of finish without being photorealistic, right? Without taking the time it takes to be photorealistic. And each one is accompanied by the, the process steps. And again, plays with a lot of color. Just you can have fun with it. All right. So how will I keep building this? And I'm just showing you with the head so far. Um, if I'm happy with that base painting, I have to realize that that's because there's the gray behind it, right? So at this point, I might use the magic wand and select the contiguous shapes around my base painting. See that? And then I might take it from my gray layer and duplicate that. Command J. Nope, oh, I have to unlock it to do that. Whoops. I want to invert that selection. So it's like getting a little cookie cutter. So that is part of the base painting. That gray is now in there. So build on top of that. And now that's looking a little bit better. Now I can bring in the rest of my sketch. So how am I going to get the legs in there? Well, let's continue with the body. Take my 100% brush, but on a new layer. And I'm going to move that underneath my base painting layer. Hold down Option, get the shadow color, and say, OK, I want the leg to be this way, and I want the paw to be lit. With digital painting, you're really paying attention to light source, direction of light. That's why it's so helpful to have references. Now I can steal colors not just from the photo, but also from myself. But I'm still at 100% opacity. Though my brush is kind of rough edged, that helps to blend. I'm not doing any blending of color yet. And then this leg has kind of a core shadow on it. So it's darkest down the middle. And it's a little bit warmer on this side. Oops, too dark. Now, you do need a lot of um, running memory for digital painting, because your history, we want to save about 500 history states every time you use the brush, right? It remembers it. So this takes up a lot of memory. And so you want to save frequently. And you'll know that your computer is struggling. Sometimes you have to close Photoshop to clear the cached memory and reopen it. You'll know it's struggling if your brush ever lags behind you. And that's true whether you're using a stylus or not. And then the body, it's kind of tricky. I'm going to have to 